CBS presents this program in color. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. says he was safe. Where are your eyes? In the back of your head? He was out a mile. He must like you. Usually he's impartial in my favor. Well, how about tossing me a few more grounders? I need the practice. I think you're pretty good at it now. I've got to be better than good. The Hawks are having a big game with the Pixley Panthers on Saturday. You know something, Betty Joe? I played baseball in high school, college, and on the Air Force team. And you're the prettiest shortstop I've ever seen. See you later, honey. Did you hear what he said? He said I was the prettiest shortstop he'd ever seen. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't understand. It's not what he said. It's the way he said. <laughs> The principal advantage of centrifugal pumps is their ability to handle all kinds of spray chemicals with minimum wear. There you are, Steve. Hi, Bobby Joe. I came across this simple, beautiful passage from Shakespeare's sonnets. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. And summer's lease hath all too short a date. Isn't that beautiful? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. That guy beats a mean sonnet. <laughs> I'm sorry I interrupted you. That's all right. This is kind of dull. It's a manual on crop dusting. Principal advantage of centrifugal pumps is their ability to handle all kinds of spray chemicals with minimum wear. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it sure sounds better when you read it. No, I mean it. You make it sound like it was written by that Shakespeare cat. I do? The pesticide is effective equally on grasshoppers, bow weevils, cereal leaf beetles, beet leaf hoppers, and grub worms. And grub worms. <laughs> There isn't another girl in the world who could make a grub worm sound so desirable. Thank you. That's okay. Hey, will you excuse me? I gotta take my medicine. Grub worm. Grub worm? Grub worm. It's perfect, Billy Joe. Is there anything else, Steve? No, that's it for today. We've been at it for nearly four hours. You must be tired. Oh, no, I'm not the least bit tired. I could type letters for you forever. Thank you, Billy Joe. <laughs> Steve Elliott. Mom, hmm? got an extra towel? 
Oh, I sure have. I wondered when somebody would ask. Thanks, Ma. Hey, hey. <laughs> what about the dishes? Pardon? Well, <laughs> us quaint old country folk have a strange custom that when we wash dishes, we dry them. Or what did you have in mind when you asked the tell? Oh, I needed it for this. Don't you put that dirty baseball on my clean towel. Oh, Mom! <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but... Steve was the last one to touch this ball. So? I'm going to put it in a glass case and keep it on my dresser. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Out of the three of us, he's chosen me. Hold it, hold it. What is this chosen me business? Listen here, young lady. You're letting your imagination run away with you. Steve is 25 years old and he's too old for you. Mother, age simply has nothing to do with it. It's a case of his maturity reaching out for my maturity. Well, that's it. Well, then why don't you let your maturity go all the way and reach out for Floyd or Charlie? <laughs> Mothers. I always said that girl had a level head on her shoulders, and she does. Something fell on it and flattened it out. <laughs> I'm sure glad you showed up. Help me turn this mattress. It's beautiful, Mother. It's even prettier on the other side. Now help me flip it over. Hmm? I'm talking about this book. Oh, the book. Uh, well, I'll get Uncle Joe to help me. Why don't you go uh, practice for the Shakespearean festival? Just listen to this. In the annals of crop dusting, there is no greater challenge to man or plane than the crusade against the bow weaver. Um... <laughs> uh, I don't seem to place that passage from Shakespeare. Is it the third act of Hamlet or the second act of Othello? Oh, it's on page five from the Bulletin on Crop Dusting by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Mmm, how exciting. <laughs> now, in uh, Annals of Mattress Turning, two hands are better than one, so let's go. Mom, how can you make so much fuss over a mattress when there are such important issues in life? For instance, did you know that a common era, the novice crop duster, is the failure to measure drift hazards. You know, your mother may have her faults, but one thing you can be sure of, she always measures her drift hazards. I'm serious. Steve Elliott, huh? How did you know? Just a wild guess. <laughs> it is pretty wild. When you think of Steve, a man of the world. I mean, when you think of all the women he must have known in his life. And yet he's... He's chosen you. <laughs> Whatever put such an idea into your head? Mother, if a man didn't care, would he explain the seven methods of pesticide? <laughs> I guess when you're a teenager, that's as good a reason as any. <laughs> Here. You and Steve finally get through with all that dictation? Yes. How many you want? One. One? <laughs> There's only one letter. After four hours of typing? Must be an awful long letter. Oh. Well, I guess when you're typing technical terms, it can get complicated. No, it wasn't complicated at all. It just said, Dear sir, please send me your catalog on pesticides. Yours truly, Steve Ellie. <laughs> after four hours? Oh, it wasn't me, Mom. It was him. Well, I never saw a man so flustered. Poor man. Yes, can you imagine? This is a man of the world, used to having sophisticated women fling themselves at his feet. His <laughs> shoes must be a mess. <laughs> and he meets a simple country secretary, and immediately he comes unglued. That's the way it goes. He's the wreck, and the simple country secretary is flustered a bit. Of course not. Oh, may I have a stamp? Oh, sure, sure. I just want to make sure he signed it. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. <laughs> I'm glad he's the one that's flustered. <laughs> Hi, Kate. 
I get to working so hard, I don't notice nothing. I do. I notice you're sweeping in the same spot you were half an hour ago. Well, well this is an old hotel, Kate, and it's settled. The dust and the dirt has a tendency to collect right here in this dip. So you just stand here and wait for the dirt to come to you. Well, you know me, I like to do things a scientific way. Here comes a ball of dust now. Got it. Now, by the way, what do you make of this? Steve Elliott, Mr. and Mrs. Steve Elliott, Mrs. B.J. Elliott, Mr. and Mrs. Steve Elliott, and family, won't you get this? In the wastebasket. You think one of our girls is getting serious about this fella? Yeah, I'm afraid so. You're afraid so? What about me? What about you? Why, me and Steve have got an airline empire to get started. And there ain't nothing will ruin an empire like a wife. <laughs> Look what happened when Anthony met Cleopatra. Napoleon got to messing around with Josephine. Poof. Everything went galley west. Well, you're a lot luckier than they were. At least you have something to turn to. What? Your carpet sweeper. Whoops! Here comes a ball of dust. Go get him, tiger! <laughs> Well, it's going to be a little hard to cook breakfast from any other part of the house. This morning, I'm making breakfast. You're making breakfast? That's right, Mom. Huh. You're Billy Joe, all right. For a minute, I thought there was an imposter in the hotel. Very, very funny, Mom. Now, out. Today, you're a guest. I'm going to enjoy that. That's what I want. Just want you to sit down at the table and relax. Thank you, dear. That's a mighty fancy dress you're wearing so as I can relax. <laughs> oh, by the way, Steve will be down for breakfast, too. Or had you thought of that? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Carson. Yeah, I can't hold back no longer. I gotta give you the good news, even though it gives you a relapse. What good news? Not the company I was telling you were foreman. I'm giving you a piece of it. What company? You know, Carson Elliott Air Express, spraying crops, firefighting, special charter service. All that. Now, this may sound kind of big to you, but with me running the show, we'll clean up. I'll take care of the executive end, the sales and promotion, but you got the easy job. You just sat there flying that plane, delivering passengers and freight, spraying crops, fighting fires, and on weekends, skywriting our names all over the state. <laughs> yeah, that, that easy stuff ought to keep me pretty busy. Yeah. Now, that brings me to another point. I don't know exactly how to put this to you, but uh, as partners, we got to lay things right on the line. Is that right? Right. Go ahead and lay it on the line. All right. Here it is. You can't build an empire with a wife hanging on your coattails. <laughs> Go ahead. Lay it on the line. <laughs> Just did. Oh. Yeah, now, let me put it to you another way. While you're barnstorming around building our dynasty, you can't have no wife calling you on a plane on the intercom and saying, don't forget to bring home a bunch of rutabaggers. <laughs> Mr. Carson, you can stop worrying. In the first place, I don't have a wife. In the second place, I'm not looking for a wife. And in the third place, I hate rutabaggers. Put her there, partner. I knew you'd come around to my way of thinking. <laughs> yes, sir, Carson and Elliot are going to do for the flying business what Eli Whitney did for the steamboat. <laughs> a sign of those girls. The schedule calls for us to leave at 8 o'clock, and we most always make it by 8.30. Right now, it's 9.15. If those girls don't hurry up, they're going to make us late. We can't waste no more time. Let's go get them. Right. Sorry we're late. Guess we better get going. What's the hurry? Yeah, what's the big rush? The boy said the cannonball was late already. What time is it, Kate? 9.30. Looks like we blew it, Floyd. Yeah, what are we gonna do? Only one thing to do. Uh, make up a new schedule. <laughs> but the girls have got to get to school. Billy Joe, hurry up. Coming. Oh, 
time that girl spends on her makeup, you'd think her shorthand teacher was Rock Hudson. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Good morning, Hi, Good morning. Well, there's no time for chit-chat. Go get your books. Oh, I'm not going in today. Why not? Oh, well, didn't I tell you? Um, the uh, secretarial school is being painted today. Well, let's get going. Bye, girls. Bye. Bye. See you later. Well, Mom, Steve says he'll be down in a minute. <laughs> so that's it. We're not going to school either. Why not? Well, she's not going. Well, your sister has a good reason for painting the school. Well, we've got good reasons too. Such as? We don't feel well, do we? No, we don't. Oh. Hi, Steve. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Bradley. Good morning, Steve. I'm sorry to say, but I'm going to have breakfast in Hooterville. I'm going in on the cannonball to send a wire about that airplane part I ordered. How could I ever have made such a silly mistake? They're paying the secretarial school next Monday. Hey, Steve, wait till I get my book. Hey, wait a minute! Yes. I thought you two had stomach aches. Oh, we're having our stomach aches next Monday. <laughs> Girls. <laughs> What are you doing there? What are you doing? Get away from that door. This is no time to deliver the mail. Steve is asleep in there. Here, let go. Now look what you've done, you stubborn ox. I'll have to patch it together again. Give me that. Wow. I can't believe Betty Joe would write this. Kate. Kate. My dearest Steve, oh, I can't believe Betty Jo would write this. I may be the youngest, and my family only regards me as a child. But when you look at me, I fulfill my destiny as a woman. Betty Jo. <laughs> oh. Got another while for you. Look what I found when I was cleaning out Bobby Joe's wastebasket. A poem. Well, Bobby Joe's always writing poems. Not like those. Oh, man with wings, man with wings, can't you hear how my heart sings? Greatest of the sky worries kings, swoop down and take me, man with wings. Keep going. Where'er I look, I see thy face, in field, in flower, in outer space. Those are just the throwaways. Think what the one she sent must be like. Nationals, poems, party dresses. I don't know what I'm going to do with those girls, but I'm going to do it first thing in the morning. <laughs> That's funny you should ask. I've been wanting a word with you. Oh, I don't know how to begin. Uh, this is going to sound like... Well, in other words, I could be imagining it, but... <sighs> Mrs. Bradley, you have three wonderful daughters. They're charming and... And they're jumping to a conclusion that isn't there. <sighs> well, that about sums it up. Frankly, right now I'm in no position to be serious with any girl. Well, for a man that didn't go fishing, you sure came up with a full net. Here, <laughs> Wow. I don't really know what to do about this. That's because you're not a woman. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I couldn't. Or could I? <laughs> There's number one. Get going. It'll work. Got your note. 
I think an elopement would be real romantic, don't you? Gee. I figure the sooner the better. Like this Saturday afternoon. You mean this coming Saturday? I figured it all out. By then, my plane will be fixed, and we can take off and wire the good news back from Alaska. This Saturday? Oh, oh gosh, Steve, I, I simply can't. Why not? Why? Saturday's the most important day in my whole life. That's the day the Hooterville Hawks play the Pixley Panthers. And if I don't show up, the Hawks don't stand a chance. A baseball game is more important than us? Well, well, not more important, maybe, but... Gee, they're counting on me, and... Well, how about after the game? No. I will not play second fiddle to a crummy baseball team. Well, our baseball team will not play second fiddle to a crop duster. <laughs> Steve, I'm immensely flattered. And of course, I meant everything I wrote in those poems. Friday night is out. But it has to be Friday. Steve, how can you even suggest it? You know how long I've been studying for the Shakespeare Festival. There won't be another one until next year. I'm sorry, Steve. The quality of mercy is not strained. It drops like a gentle rain from heaven. <laughs> Two down, one to go. You sure know your psychology, Mrs. Bradley. No, I just know my daughters. One more and you're off the hook. <laughs> Billy Joe, I've got to talk to you. Yes, Steve? Do you know what I've been doing this last hour? Walking, walking, walking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Billy Joe. The way you served my breakfast, well, I'd like to have you serve me breakfast the rest of my life. Steve. Come fly with me this instant. You mean right now? Now or never. Give me five minutes to pack. <laughs> Spratly? <laughs> it didn't work. She said yes. She said what? She's going upstairs to pack. Pack? You mean she... she, 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 she. You gotta stall her off, Mrs. Bradley. You gotta give me an hour head start, that's all I ask. But Steve... If you think David Jansen can run and hide, watch this. <laughs> all right, young lady, where do you think you're going? Well, didn't Steve tell you? He wants me to serve him breakfast the rest of his life. Mm. Well, you march yourself right upstairs or you're not going to get any supper. Mother, will you stop treating me like a child? I'm an adult and I expect to be treated like an adult. All right. Now, either you take that bag upstairs or I'm going to take it up for you. <laughs> but it's empty. You, you can't elope with an empty suitcase. You, you've got... All right. What is it? Well, if you can pull a juvenile trick on me, I can pull one back. But I thought you liked Steve. Oh, Mother, if Steve is ever ready to make a serious proposal, we won't need any coaching from the side. And, Mom, how could you do that? Well, I'll tell you. I'm, I always thought I had a level head, and I do. But I guess something fell on it and flattened it out. <laughs> oh, Mom. <laughs> Look, you can tell Steve if he's still willing to fly away with me. I'm willing to fly as far as the Pixley Bijou. <laughs> this triple feature at the Bijou, Mom. We may be late. Well, don't worry. Enjoy yourselves. It isn't often you get to see a Hoot Gibson festival. <laughs> Bye. See you later, folks. Aren't they cute? There ain't nothing cute about seeing an empire start to crumble.
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation. <laughs>